Okay, so um, let's look at this one called Yoast. Um, if we go to Plugins, Add New, we might even see it right away under Featured or Popular, but if you don't, we will search for it, and it's spelled Y. O A S T like toast with a Y. Yoast is one of a variety of plugins that helps you SEO optimize your site. Um, SEO is uh, Yoast is a popular one. There's another one called uh, All in One SEO. This one right here. Okay, so it shows them like this. So these two are very popular. Uh, I have colleagues that swear by this one, and I believe it. I've used this one for years. And so this is a case about either one should be good. They're both famous. They both have a lot of installations. Popularity. Over a million installations, over a million. Compatible, compatible. Only one month old, two days old, five stars, four and a half, 551 versus 20,000. So Yoast is the one that's the big, big, big famous one. Either of these would work, but I have personally the more experience with Yoast. In my company, we've used Yoast more often. And this is, again, you don't want to install both of them. They're both going to try to do the same thing. You're going to conflict. This, like most plugins nowadays, you're going to be able to download it, install it, and it'll be basically free. There's going to be extra features that it says, if you need this feature, upgrade to Pro. And that's very common. So let's check it out. Let's check out the free version. Click Install. So we'll take a moment. Once it installs, remember to activate. What this one does is it adds a new menu item down there, SEO. The Yoast icon, SEO, it's above duplicator with various options. This one is the plugin that's going to embed a whole bunch of new different things in different parts of the site. We'll see this in a moment. One of them you might have noticed, did you get a little pop-up at the top? I had one a moment ago. It says, we detected three... SEO problems on your site. You may have more or less. But if you look at this icon up here, and click on notifications, there's this first time configuration, problems, huge SEO issue, you're blocking access to robots, you must go to your reading settings and uncheck the box. Um, you don't have to do it, but yes, this is when we said here, discourage search engines. It's telling you that's a big problem. You might have done that on accident. Well, we know we did it on purpose. I, I said we're going to do it on purpose as we're making our site. And this detected it. If you forget to turn that off, this will tell you. Make sure to turn that off when you publish it to, to GoDaddy. You still have the default WordPress tagline. Even an empty one is probably better. You can fix this here. So that's where you can go, and it'll tell you. This still has the just another WordPress site. Well, that's not very helpful for your SEO, because you and every other beginner has it, and therefore you're not standing out from the competition. So at one point, I would go there and, and edit it and type, as I said previously, all of these spots are places for you to write uh, relevant sentences with keywords to help get found. Speaking of keywords, if you go back, under the Yoast icon at the top, keyword research. Right here are some links for you to help understand keywords, creating keywords. If you took my SEO class, or if you're taking it now, we talk in there about the long tail keyword strategy. And here's a place where you can 
do that research to uh, find out the right keywords that work best on your site. This will go off over there and you know, do that on your own. There's also Google Trends, what are hot keywords at the moment. Um, there's a book on SEO over there. Now this is a free download of the SEO Like on most of them, there is an upgrade, yeah. But by itself, it's very powerful. Now here it says, you will be able to optimize your site to focus on five keywords with the paid version. With the free version, it's just one site. I mean, one, one keyword to optimize. So the basic things are here, but then, okay, get real-time suggestions. Um, tech support no ads when you upgrade and then out of curiosity let's see what their prices are at the moment premium do they, do they use like a, a comma to separate keywords like like if you said conica repair comma would that be one keyword or would it take both of those uh, the commas are often used for the separators yes so in between commas is is different keywords Right now, we would only take one, and we'll see how that looks in a moment. Yeah. Not all of them, but uh, this one is more like an ad for itself. So see here, it pops up, uh, hire us for this, or there's this extra or that. So no, they're not going to put sites. They're not going to put ads on your site. No, it's their own ads for their own products. You can exp the funny thing with this is that it is it doesn't say it very obviously but it is $79 a year um, they it says uh, $79 for a year of upgrades so right now I've got version Yoast version 1.2 let's say and throughout the year we're gonna get 1.2 1.5 1.9 whatever then the year ends it's the next year it's 2019 and then uh, well, I can't upgrade anymore from 1.9 to 2.0 anymore. I ran out of uh, the, you know, the service to do the upgrades. You could stay with 1.9 and pay that one time $79 one time. But again, you, you often want to do updates of your plugins and software to keep up to date with security issues and features. So that's very common that I see in these plugins. You, you get a free, you get a year of upgrades and tech support. You can stop paying and the plugin will still work, but then you're stuck on that version number. Are you offering a link to this like, uh, No, I don't have an affiliate link on this one. You, sh you should just go through it directly mm -hmm. through them. Let me show you the most powerful aspect of, of this. Uh, there's various settings that, that might be useful to go through, but it, the best thing you should do at some point is you go through this configuration wizard. It will jump you through some steps that are very useful. You can look at that on your own. What I want to show you is where you will mostly be using Yoast is like this. Go over to Pages, and you're going to get some new columns right here. Um, these three icons, these are new right here. These. SEO score is the important one. This is going to give you a color-coded grade about how well your pages are optimized. And modern SEO is about optimizing your whole site page by page, screen by screen. In the old days, SEO was pretty easy. We would just need to optimize the home screen. Nowadays, we have to optimize every page. I want to put the right keywords in the About screen, the right keywords in the Contact, the right keywords in each individual blog. And yes, that is a lot of work, a lot of effort, but that's just how it is nowadays. I want to stand out from the competition. I want to do things right. I need to optimize every page. This will give you at a glance, they're all gray. You haven't started an optimization yet. Then it's going to go like a stoplight. Red, actually green at the bottom, right? Green, yellow, red. I'm suddenly forgetting the order of the... <laughs> did you drive here tonight? I did, but I don't remember stopping. 
<laughs> well, some countries have red on top and some have green on top, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's the color there somewhere. That's what you tell the cop, right? That's right. It was red, it was red after I passed it. <laughs> so this will give you, okay, red, you haven't optimized the, site, the page very well. Yellow or orange, you've optimized it uh, on the right track. And green, it's well optimized. Let's see that in action right now. Let's go to edit the About Us page. Because now Yoast also gives us a brand new box down here, Yoast SEO. This gives us a preview of how it would look from a search result. That looks like a Google search. This page is going to show up on a search. It'll say About Us, Victor's Bakery. It'll have the web address, and it'll have a little bit of preview text, a description, a snippet. What's the keyword that is going to apply to this page? Nothing at the moment. And below it, I then get an analysis. Five problems, three things that could be improved. No green check marks that I did a good job. Um, on the right, top right, it'll also say here, SEO is not available. We haven't tried to optimize it yet. Readability is also part of SEO nowadays. Is the, is the text written well? Is, is it good capitalization and grammar and all of that? That's part of SEO nowadays. Because spammers often don't talk good. And that's going to be reflected on your site score if you're not writing properly. So the way this would work is, OK, on the About Us page, I want the About Us page to be found by the search engines. So I would go here to Focus, and I would put in here, you know, About Us. What it's going to do then is analyze. See, now I've got a red. It analyzed that. I've still got these problems. I have a couple of good things. You've never used this keyword before. That's good. The SEO title contains the Focus keyword. So the page is called About Us. And the keyword I'm trying to optimize is About Us. So that's why it's giving me green. This is the first time I use this keyword in my whole site. So uniqueness of your keywords is also important. That's what it's trying to explain here. The focus keyword doesn't appear on the first paragraph. Make sure the topic is clear immediate. OK, well, I can add about us on the first piece of text here. But before I go too off here, this is a terrible keyword to try to use. I just use it as an example. No one is really going to search for about us on Google. That'll only take me so far because am I going to use my company name on every page? I'm probably going to use a different topic on different pages, especially the products page, the blog page, and such. This assumes someone knows a company called Victor's Bakery exists. No, someone is going to look for authentic Mexican pastries. I have to figure out what are the keywords people are going to search for. Not the name of my business. They don't know I exist. They're going to search for the product I'm selling, the service I'm selling, what my site is about. So if that's going to be, if I've determined that's going to be my keyword, and I determine it perhaps by some research and all of that, or taking my other class. Um, I've determined that this is the keyword I want to use so that people can find this screen of my site. So I need to make sure I've, I convert as many of these red dots into yellow dots or green dots. The, it'll then also say up here, it's red. This one page is red. So would it be better if you were saying uh, No, the order of those words don't matter like they used to. It used to matter that it was San Diego Bakery. Nowadays, it's fine if you put our bakery is in San Diego. It's fine. It'll pick up the words San Diego and bakery. Those other words are, are not that relevant. They're, they're known as stock words. They just and stop the curve. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can omit them. Um, Yes, but this is changing. Uh, the search engines are changing their algorithm um, in terms of 
what uh, how people search. The more people search, you know, in the old days we have to we have to search very mechanically because these search engines were were dumber than they are now. Now that the search engines are smarter, now that we're searching smarter, we have to keep up with that. Because nowadays I can ask my phone, what's a nearby uh, Mexican pastry shop? I'm going to ask it like a question. I'm not going to search San Diego bakery nearby. I'm going to ask it. I'm going to use natural language. So it's, it's kind of a long answer to do here. That's why I have the other class. But you're going to put keywords or a phrase and then try to make sure that those that phrase is used throughout the page as best as possible. Now, yeah. would that be better for your home page or your about us page? That type of a statement is, is it better to use it in more than one page or just on one and be creative on the other? No. Well, notice how it's saying that it's good that you've used this for the first time. It's not going to get you very far if you use the same keywords over and over. That was the old way. So yes, you are it might be better on the home page, sure, but then you have to use different content, different keywords on different pages. Because um, it's all about putting as many of these keywords that are relevant to your business on different pages so that people can find you with the different words. Question. Victor, um, is there data, um, data available on finding out what are the top ways people are looking for industries? Yes, that's exactly over here. When you go to the keyword research, AdWords external, this is the whole thing right here. Uh, you need to create a free account, but then over here, there's the keyword planner that will help you target industries, related words. It will show you what's hot in a particular month or day or year, and it's all here uh, on the keyword planner part of Google, straight from Google. And there's a free version and a paid version, like most of these things, but the free version is very powerful. I chose edit snippet and it gave me a better description. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you could change that description by writing what you want people to see in the meta description. You can and you should. The default is that what is going to appear on the result here is just gonna be what it finds on the first few characters of your page. Uh, you should craft that description there uh, so that it helps you even more to be found. It doesn't have to be what's on the first paragraph of text. It can be complete sentences. It should be complete sentences because that's what's going to show up for people when they search. If I just put in here authentic set cat comma San Diego comma pastry, well that's what's going to show up on Google. And actually, Google's going to ignore that because that looks like you're gaming the system. That's not valuable to a real person searching. They want to see a little snippet there. That's where you can put a little bit of about us info and such to convince people this is the right one to click on. This is the right bakery that I'm trying to click on. It's kind of like the uh, billboard going down the freeway. You know, something that you can you know, catch their eye when they're looking yeah. through search results. Yeah, you get a whole screen of results, and then it says this is a thousand results. Well, you need to catch their attention, and just keywords like that is not going to do it. You're going to write something real that catches attention. We sell the best organic pastries in San Diego. Yeah, that's got free organic, you know, yeah. Mexican pastries. Yeah, if that's your target audience, you're going to put your keywords in there in the description in a meaningful way with real sentences, and your keywords are going to be there. We don't literally write just keywords. We write real sentences with capital letters and all of that. Please use Yoast. Optimize every page of your site. Um, set a keyword. Not case sensitive. Set a keyword for each page. Then follow the dots to convert them from red to green. It's okay to set them or get them to yellow. Red is bad. So maybe I try and I try and I can't get the color to go to green. That's okay. Yellow is going to be way better than red, which is badly optimized, which is also still better than gray, which I haven't even started to optimize it. So it's perfectly fine that you try to get as many of these to convert to yellow, 
and then that up there is yellow. Yes? Okay, so are we focused on all the reds and yellows and greens on here, or when we go up to that first stoplight that you showed us, we want that to be green? It's the same thing. The one on top here and the one up here, the, this is the overall grade of the whole page. Th that overall grade comes from all these individual ones. So, so I don't the better it any... is, the less red dots you're going to have. Yes. I haven't added an image. Okay, I'm going to add an image that's going to make a red dot into green. I don't have a meta description. I haven't finished writing it. When I do, that's going to become green. So all of these that are yellow, well, I'm going to try to also do those as well. My title is too short. It's saying, you know, about us is too short. Maybe about our bakery. Because if you extract about us out of context, about who, about what. So your title is too short. And uh, all of these have a little question also for, for more help. Yes? Um, it's not on one of those um, charts right there. On the orange one, it says the slug for this page contains the stop words. But what does it refer to when it says the slug? Let's see, they've got that, hmm, they've got it hidden, yeah, um, on the screen options, there's an item that says slug, and the thing with slug is it's the same thing basically as your permalink, picturesbakery.com slash about. When I turn on slug at the top here, I get a brand new field, slug which is the same as what's up on the permalink. So it's saying here about is too short. Here's where I can go in and write about San Diego Bakery. And notice, yes, I was about to say that. So notice how here, uh, no spaces, because this is going to be part of a web address. So we should use dashes to separate the, the words. That would be the same thing as if I had set it at the top over here. Edit up here. I guess that's why it's hidden now, although it's obvious that the box is called slug, but it's the same thing here about San Diego Bakery. Once I add that and save it, this will replace the one down there. It doesn't update right away. Where exactly? Which metadata? Uh, I'm still doing the metadata thing. I'm sorry, I would come behind the bothers. This one right here? Metadata, yeah. So when I had my original snippet, it did finish a sentence. Well, notice as you notice as you type, that little box fills up and at a certain point when you're in green you're fine. And then when you go too far, it'll say it's too long. Because it'll crop it and then it's no longer visible and useful. So there's a limit on that little bar. What is the SEO title? SEO title, um, it's right here. I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't think of really changing this too much. The default here it's saying it's gonna put the title of the page, um, the uh, title page, I forget what page is, a separator and then the site name, it's, it shows it right here. So about us, separator, site name. So if you wanted to change the structure, which I probably wouldn't, uh, I can set it that it's gonna say a certain way. So you know, if I have it my site, well, it's gonna say my site. But I would just leave that title alone because it's going to be based on the title of the page and then the name of your site. So I've got one keyword that I'm using to, to optimize this page. I want to add more keywords. That's when it says go premium is when we said you can optimize a page for up to five keywords. With the free one, it's one keyword at a time. There's a little help thing over here, video tutorial. And do we hit close snippet editor when we're done, or do we just hit update? 
Uh, you have to do both. You close that if you're done with it, and then it, when you've made changes, you want to update. SEO is an in depth process. All pages must be optimized. Yes, you'll see it at a glance how well you've done back on pages. Remember to optimize. Yeah, just let me finish my thought here. Remember to optimize all uh, pages and posts for best results. And it can take a while. I might not do this, you know, in, in a few minutes. I might have to do keyword research first and see what words I've already used and which ones I haven't. It might take a while. What was the question? You follow the dots. You do each of the items that it's asking you to do. You mean in the box below analysis? Mm-hmm. So it's only going to show you the, the color in general from pages. You're going to have to edit each one, and then you have that Yoast box where it shows you the analysis there. Victor, yes? Is it, when you're laying out a company's website, it seems like you should include, in, in addition to design docs and uh, uh, new UX stocks and everything, you should have an SEO doc. Huh? So yeah, everybody looks at and says, okay, this is, you know, copy guys, this is what you're targeting, and graphics, this is what you're targeting, and then bring it all together. Yes, for the big companies, all of that is laid out in a big Bible. That's what they call it. It's a Bible of the company. This is how, these are the colors, the only colors we can use, the color formulas. This is the uh, this is the phrasing we will use, no slang or whatever. This is the keywords that we want to use over and over on the website. These are the social media accounts and this is how we manage them. So yes, for bigger companies, um, all of that is included in you know one document, chapter by chapter, whatever, and then everyone's on board. The graphics people follow their section and the copy people, the text people follow their section, the social media people follow their section. For us, that might be small businesses. Well, that's still for us. That's still something useful for us in a Word document. Write all of that down and keep following it. That way we can be consistent. Notice how Coca-Cola is consistent. It's the same red color all the time. It's the same mascots all the time. Nike's consistent. All of these companies are consistent because they have some sort of document that everyone follows for every aspect of the company. And we should too. Uh, but we don't know about that until you know we kind of get educated a little bit about it, and then it's not that complicated. It's time consuming, but you know you write all of this Once down. You set it up. You don't get. That's how you don't get crazy stuff on the website. Yeah, that's how you're consistent and uh, keep, create a brand and create customers and loyalty. Uh, they recognize your colors. You know, if someone is following twenty Twitter accounts and then your icon appears with its own unique colors and graphic and logo and yours stands out from the noise and that same color then shows up if someone that same color and logo shows up when they uh, subscribe to your newsletter up on the header same thing and then when they visit your website same colors and graphics and slogan and such and it's all consistency and who normally manages that document That's like a living document where I guess a company would have some kind of a job. Yeah, the, the marketing department would be in charge of that. That's, a, that's a part of what is related to marketing, you know, to advertise the company. So it's very common for the, uh, a marketing department to be in charge of that. 
to keep keep it up to date, keep it with the latest standards and decimating it to the rest of the company about here's the font we use nowadays. Don't use the old one. And then for us that maybe we we run everything, well it's, it's going to be us or someone an unpaid intern or something. So this is the one that um, I really want to show, and it's just the tip of the iceberg what I'm going to talk about, because it's going to depend on everyone's own company and such, and you know, I, I don't work for them or anything like that. I'm not like promoting them, and I'm not going to troubleshoot them all and such. But there are uh, you know, help screens and the frequently asked questions, and each little box here has a little question mark. What does this do? You can read on that, and then there's the help with videos. So for free, you get so much great stuff, and you just have to figure out how it works, and they will help you. But then, of course, if you want the support and the more features, that's when it goes over to Time to Upgrade. And it might be useful, because again, it's a cost of doing business. And I'm not a tax pro or anything like that, but many of these things are what's tax deductible. If you've got yourself legitimately set up uh, as a corporation or whatever, as an LLC or a sole proprietorship and such, these are the things of the cost of doing business that you may be able to deduct from your taxes. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm not giving you any advice. I'm just telling you, go check with professionals, uh, such as Golden Hill Tax in Golden Hill. There are good people there. And uh, get it all figured out, and it's the cost of doing business. So um, we're going to wind down this lecture in a moment to start to do a backup of our site. And uh, when we come back next time, we'll look at a couple more plugins, but we still got other things on the agenda. We're going to get uh, closer and closer to start to do the e-commerce aspect. Definitely next week, maybe Tuesday, definitely by Thursday, we're going to start to add e-commerce to our site. Yeah. Uh, next week, we're going to see about like, uploading to GoDaddy or to host. Two weeks on the final week of the class, because we have next week, 22-24, uh, and then the final week of the class is 29-31. Uh, so at the, very late, at the very latest, we will do it on the 31st, probably also on the 29th. So last week of class, we will do, we'll do that part. Okay. Yes? Since um, so you're winding down, um, would you be able to include this on the next panel? Um, Off the top of my head, I, I, I'm not sure. I never quite thought about it. I like that it logs me out for security, but it, I, I definitely see how it could be annoying. I'd have to look it up. I'm, I'm not sure where you would change that, but it's supposed to be a security feature. A quick question on the permalink. If, you're, if your domain name is, say, San Diego Bakery com, mm -hmm. can you is it healthy to repeat yourself about San Diego Bakery? In other words, it's not necessary. Then it is redundant. If I am San Diego Bakery com slash about, I don't have to put that in again because no. it's already there. The some of these pages like about us and contact us, they're not. You don't spend that much time optimizing those. You spend more time customizing individual products and blogs and that sort of content that you're always creating. You optimize about or contact one time and, and that's it. But it's going to be the individual items that you, that you sell or promote. All right, so uh, perhaps because you did a good job earlier today setting yourself up, resurrecting the site, on your own then, try to back up your site uh, with Duplicator. Give that a shot first yourself. Follow the first part of the handout. If you don't quite get it, then call me over, but I'll end this point. I won't go through the steps, so you try it based on the handout. I'll put a copy of my site into the folder, and I'll put my notes into the folder, and we'll end here. We'll have a little lab time if you need some help. And then we'll wrap it up, have a good weekend, and then when we come back on Thursday, we're getting closer to the e-commerce aspect of things.